Welcome to What's to Eat. I'm your host, Linda Lonigan, Senior Clinical Nutritionist. I'm here to show you the very best your community has to offer in wonderful food and delectable treats. Today, I am joined by the amazing Ellen DiVitrio, uh, who is a healthy and lifestyle coach. Welcome. Thank Ellen. you. Thanks for having me. You bet. All these wonderful foods. So you're here today to share a wonderful and healthy meals that can be made with great ingredients. Yeah, okay? we're, we're pretty much going to walk you through like starting with breakfast, going through lunch, snack, and then dinner. Is that okay? That sounds exceptional. Okay. So what's first up? Okay, first we're going to start with our sweet potato and kale frittata. Uh-huh. And okay. do you ever have frittata is like, you know, a glorified omelet that you sure. make in the oven? Okay. Sure. Absolutely. So we're going to start off, of course, we're going to have kale in mm -hmm. there and sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. um, the recipe initially that I saw called for turkey sausage, mm -hmm. but I don't like all any other flavorings that might be in there. Right. So I just did like regular uh, ground turkey. Sure. Okay. And then, of sure. course, tomato for the top. Absolutely. All right. So yes. we're going to get started? Yes. All right. The thing is I like to have done first. It's just slicing tomato. You could use regular tomato or grape tomatoes. I like. I always like using like a medium-sized tomato because I like the way it looks on the sure. finished product. And wonderful color. I'm always saying the tomatoes are full of lycopenes and vitamin C and great fiber. Yep. So tomato slices pretty much done. Put aside because that's going to be the decoration on the top. Yes. So we're going to put that aside. Then we're going to go and we're going to grate our sweet potatoes. It's funny, whenever I ask my husband to grate sweet potatoes, he ends up using like the really, really narrow side <laughs> or the really wide side and ends up with slices. So I just like to use the, the medium grating. Sure. So you're going to grate three cups. And I always leave the peel on. Uh -huh. Like some recipes say to take the peel off, sure. but don't sure. you want the extra fiber? You bet. So you definitely want to leave do. that in there. So you're going to have three cups of your grated sweet potato. Mm. Looks wonderful. And then just gonna mix the sweet that sweet potatoes up high a bit. Uh, from my viewers and vitamin A, great in fiber. And I always say to my patients that at night for a quick summer, you can just take a sweet potato and load it up with some raisins and walnuts and you're good to go with a salad. Well, have so you ever had sweet potato fries? Uh, yes. Oh my goodness, love yes. them. So yes. you have a grated sweet potato. Yes. And then just the recipe calls for one teaspoon of avocado oil, uh -huh. and avocado oil, of course, you know, is healthier than, sure. than regular Absolutely. oils. It good withstands higher heat, sure. so that's good, too. So you just mix that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then the sweet potatoes is going to serve like as a crust of the frittata, mm -hmm. but I like adding like my favorite, my favorite um, onion uh -huh. seasoning. Uh, some people say like they like chopped onions right. better. Right. Um, some people say they can't eat onions, but right. yet they can eat dehydrated onions. So this is that smells it's, wonderful. Isn't that mm. Great. It's onions and and garlic and chives mm -hmm. like all blended in there. Ready to and go. then just a tiny bit of favorite steak seasoning. So mm -hmm. this is like garlic flavor too. Love garlic. I'm always saying to my patients, garlic is my antimicrobial, antifungal, antibacterial. It's, it's just um, absolutely amazing. It'd be out to anything. Yeah. So isn't that great? Just the aroma of that oh. right away. Can we send like a, a smellogram to, to everybody watching? I'm sure my entire TV crew <laughs> with their mouth is wa mouth watering and savoring over this amazing food. Okay. So we saute that up mm -hmm. for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I like to have, as I said, the turkey done ahead of time. Uh huh. And you know, if you want to use sausage, go right ahead. Right. But I like doing just the just the ground sausage, and then three cups of baby kale. And Love you know kale. what? You don't have to measure. No. You don't need to go crazy measuring. And that looks like a lot, doesn't it? Like that. It does. Everything. It does. And I'm, I'm always telling my patients, kale is absolutely a uh, nutrient-dense powerhouse that can be added to omelets, it can be added to um, stir-fries, it can be added to your salads in such a very simple and easy way. And you can see here. Yeah. You know what's really interesting? I had gotten a, a five-ounce container of right. kale. Right. And I turned over to look at the nutrition information, right. and it said it's one serving. So wow. I'm like one serving, five-ounce container. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's 60 calories. Yeah. So, <laughs> I guess spinach is along the same lines. Right? No, it is. It is. So you're going to sa saute this up like just for a couple of minutes. Uh -huh. And still, I don't like to mix the whole thing up because I like the sweet potato to right. be like as a crust. Right. And then 
Sorry, I didn't bring it here today. You're but such whisk, a great whisk friend. up a dozen eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you pour the eggs over. And then you put the tomato slices uh -huh. on top. Yes. Let it cook for like two minutes just two to minutes. set a little yeah. bit. And then just take your whole pan and put it in the oven for about a half hour. So, so easy. Pretty amazing, right? But such wonderful, great foods put together and ingredients. Yep. Absolutely. And this is really good because it's good. It's good cold. Well, it's good right out of the oven. Yeah. And it's but good also, cold. There are times, if you take a whole frittata and you yeah. cut it into six sections, sure. Sure. six sections, right? It's, oh my God, it's two eggs. Sure. Right? And the extra protein. Right. So you could do that with fruit. You could do it with a salad. With with anything. And, and you have to see this uh, finished product. It's absolutely delectable. And I always like to say, you have something nutrient-dense, powerhouse, that's also uh, wonderful colors, flavors, and textures. And from our wonderful, wonderful cook, Ellen, um, bringing great ingredients together through something really healthy. So simple, right? Absolutely. Love it's that. Beautiful. Really beautiful. Love that. And you know what? Eating healthy doesn't have to be bland. It doesn't have to be boring. <laughs> Absolutely not. And it doesn't have to no. be complicated. No, it does not, as, as you just showed. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, so right next we have um, the makings of? We have the makings of? Lunch. Lunch. Salads, right? Salads mm. for the summer? Yes. Okay. Simple bowls. Mm -hmm. Should I put you to work? No, I won't do that. <laughs> 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 so when you when you're doing your greens right. for your salads, you don't need to have boring greens. I found these power blends right in the supermarket right. and read the ingredients of that. Check that out. Well, it has Brussels sprouts, wonderful vitamin K, uh, cabbage, wonderful food, uh, kohlrabi, broccoli, carrots, and kale. Again, a nutrient powerhouse. Just right, as it is. Aren't these colors great? Yeah, I love they those are. colors. So we're gonna take the two bags of that. And then we are going to cut up some red pepper. Mm -hmm. Great source of vitamin C, colorful. Love, love, love red pepper. And you cut the pieces as big as you want to. Uh -huh. I like dicing them up so you can see them in there. Right. And then we also have sugar, sugar snap peas. I don't know why mm -hmm. I was like, I'm cutting this up and I'm thinking of, of my garden. And when my kids were young, my husband started a garden yeah. with the kids. Yeah. And we used to give Jonathan, who, who's now 22, we used to give him <laughs> we used to give him a bowl and we would say, go out and pick the peppers, go out and pick the tomatoes. And he would no doubt come back with an empty uh. bowl, with an empty bowl. And we were like, we sent you out there to start to, to pick your vegetables. What's going on there? Because, well, I did. I ate them all. <laughs> and I saw that I saw that garden, and I have to tell you that um, as far as teaching kids to eat healthy and um, just select great, wonderful foods, what a great way to start! That and I've seen your garden to have a garden to have the kids pick the vegetables, to yes. have them wash the vegetables, to actually take place in dinner time and be part of the whole thing and cutting and slicing with with supervision, adult of supervision at all times but to actually be able to be in the process of putting a healthy and nutrient dense meal together. Yeah, we also have um, a farm in community. Oh, so we have, interesting. And it was called Farmony, and one of the moms in the neighborhood started that. And when Jonathan was pretty young in elementary school, he joined that club. Did he? Because it was a great way for him to be able to find food that he could eat. Right. This is my highly allergic child that right. I told you about. Right, 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 sure. So any sure. way to get him included in what was going on, right. especially with that. Right. So they were making things that he could eat. He, again, he was coming home with empty bowls and empty bags. But <laughs> you know what? He was having a great time. With yeah. It. Absolutely having a great time. And the whole process and everything. Um, I'm always uh, telling my patients that, you know, when you have something that has a multitude of colors and flavors and textures, um, you get filled, and you need less food, but at the same time, something is a nutrient powerhouse. Yeah. Oh, I want to tell you about the dressing. Yes. Can I tell you about that? Okay. So, do you like creamy dressings? I do. Okay. Well, I do. this is a creamy dressing. Uh huh. And this dressing, this dressing, actually, the base of it is avocado. 
Love avocado. And I'll I'll explain that to you in a couple of minutes sure. how I made it. What but it is it is avocado and tomato, apple cider vinegar, um, a little bit of like your favorite seasoning. I have like mm -hmm. a citrusy seasoning mm -hmm. that I really love, so I add that to it. And what else do I put in there? Olive oil. So you mix all this up. It'll look pretty. Look at the colors on this. It's it's, it's fantastic right. as far as everything coming together and so easy to assemble, put together. Um, have so much nutrition. Okay, you need more protein in there, right? I need more protein. Okay, yeah. need more protein. Protein's always good. So right. it the blood sugar. Let's talk about chicken. Yes, lean chicken. Yes. Yes. So chicken breast. Mm -hmm. Do you ever do you ever get like rotisserie chickens from the supermarket? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well a lot of times with those rotisserie chickens, it's like you don't know what is really in them sure. when you when you're doing those shortcuts. Sure. Sure. So what I do is I take chicken, I mm -hmm. get like boneless, skinless chicken breast, mm -hmm. and I boil it up kind of like making chicken soup. Uh-huh. And I use like my favorite onion seasoning and garlic seasoning. Right. And I just boil it up and just like a soup. And then you have, you could do like four pounds of chicken at a time. That's a great tip. And then you could take the chicken, you could slice it up. Here's some chicken slices. <laughs> <laughs> you could shred it. Sure. And you could freeze it in small portions. Right. So you I have know. like cooked fresh chicken on hand all the time. So it's a quickie shortcut. It's a great shortcut. And you know great. what you're doing with it. That's so good. here, I just cut Wonderful. it like this and I throw it in the pot. No, it's a it's, it's great way to have easy accessibility to some lean, yeah. great protein. Um, I could see right now how it would help my okay. diabetic clients that oh the rotisserie chicken yes. has added oils and chemicals and sugar where just... Ellen's wonderful tip can help so much by just keeping it on hand. I'm always saying pre-planning is essential and the key to successful eating. Yeah. There was actually somebody that told me that they got like one of those quick chickens mm -hmm. from the supermarket. And right. from reading the ingredients, it seemed like it was everything she was okay to eat. Right. And she ended up getting sick from it. I was wow. like, oh my goodness. And you're supposed to know what's in it. Wow. So this way I feel like you've got those quickie shortcuts and yeah. you know everything that's in it. Um, for this salad, you know, you need more color. So we just have some blueberries. Blueberries, wonderful prawns and thionins, and great fiber and color. Nice. Yes. You have a finished one right there. How's that I look? do. There's that blue. I'm always saying you have to get <laughs> the colors of the rainbow. And whenever, uh, whenever we try to cook together, um, I'm always saying we never have blues. So yes, blueberries. But blueberries are phenomenal in fiber. They have a great sweet taste. Uh, great antioxidants. Just a uh, fabulous finished food. Nice. Oops, you lost Oops. a blueberry. You have I to eat it. Blueberry. <laughs> Just great colors. Right, and, and, and this whole salad done this way, this is great for a family. Yeah, right? and I'm sure my crew will adore. Um, you can see the wonderful colors, flavors, everything coming together. Okay. So delish. Lunch finished, right? So delish. Okay. So you've ate a healthy breakfast. Great breakfast, Right, yes. you got a great lunch here. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about snacks. Oh, my favorite. Isn't that pretty? Yes. The very first time you made this, Ellen, as a healthy and lifestyle coach, many years ago, I said that this is absolutely fantastic, especially for kids. You want kids to have fun. You want kids to put things together themselves, but at mm -hmm. the same time, that it's colorful and so simple to put together. I just have to show this, um, how it all comes together. Did I tell you the first time I ever made those? No. The first time I ever made them was Thanksgiving, and there were about 30 of us together. Yeah. And I made a massive platter of those bundles. Right. And I had I had women coming over to me saying, oh, my God, check out my husband over there. And I'm like, you want me to check out your husband? And I'm like, yeah, look, look what he has in his hand. And he had one of Vegetables. the bundles walking around. The kids, I, I had moms coming over me going, my kid, my kid does not eat vegetables. There like, you go. what's going on here? So Kids essential. walking around with that. Right. So since then, like any time I've had the opportunity to right. make like a veggie platter. Sure. You know, to go to someone's house, I always do it that way. It, you, absolutely. Can I show you how simple it is to make? I would love to okay. see. And about this oh. wonderful, <laughs> wonderful vegetable jicama. Here you go. That's for you. There you go. Jicama. Okay. Uh, which Ellen had told me is uh, exceptional in vitamin C. It's got about 40 calories for an entire. Uh, one is, as well as very, very high in fiber, and it's from Mexico. 
right? And, and it's so good for weight loss. Great for right? weight loss. Right, because it's higher in fiber, low in carbs. You bet. And one and, of my friends, so one of my friends told me about it. And what's funny is that's what it looks like when you make a matchstick mm -hmm. out of it. And the funny thing is my daughter was over the house a couple of weeks ago, and I had made the bundles, and I had a whole bowl of the jicama sticks. Right. She's like, Mom, what the heck? Like, what is this? And I said, I'll just try it. So she took a right. bite, and she goes, well, this is gross. My daughter's 27. She's not a picky <laughs> eater. So then she put it down, and then like a minute later, she tries it again. Mm -hmm. And she goes, wow, this is really good. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a cross between like a pear and an apple sure. in a way with that crunchiness. Right, right. Next thing I know, she's sitting there Googling it. And next thing I know, she's feeding her dog. Wow. So she's like, well, it's healthy enough for him. You bet. And she cares what she feeds him. You bet. So this is jicama. Jicama. Right. And what I noticed when I taste it is it's neutral. Yeah. So it absorbs the flavors of the other foods that are added to it, but with just an extra kick of fiber. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. Well, we got to talk about that dressing, too. Yes. Okay. So that's jicama. That's jicama. And just to show you how to make those. Uh -huh. All right. So you take a cucumber, okay. a whole cucumber. Yes. And I found this gadget like a few years ago, but you could use like a melon baller. Right. Or something like this, a quarter. Oh, okay. And then you cut Got your it. you cut your chunk into yes. slices. And it's kind of like a napkin ring. Yeah. And right. what, we, what you were saying before about having the kids sure. play. Yeah. So you cut your Being veggies. You it. can use red pepper, green pepper, right. um, orange pepper, and cut everything into matchsticks. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. just have the kids stuff it. Right? Brilliant. So it's like napkin so rings well in there. And they're playing that way. And, and it's the and they feel simplest like thing. And serve this like in the platter. You could serve this with a dish of the dressing. And the dressing, you, you share it again. I'll just show it another quick picture because I, I want my viewers to see to make. For kids, it's so easy for kids to make. And great source of color and flavor, texture, and fiber um, with uh, a great dressing. And the dressing also is healthy. Yes, I'm not going to start whipping up the whole thing. <laughs> but just <laughs> to show you a sure. very simple food processor. Sure. Or if you have like a smoothie maker or right. something, it works the same way. Right. Um, for this dressing, you take half an avocado mm -hmm. and chop it up and put it in here mm -hmm. and take a tomato. Mm -hmm. And I always have extra avocados on hand because you never know when you cut one up if it's going to be overripe or not sure. ripe. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So I always have extra. Yeah. And then just uh, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Uh -huh. In uh -huh. here, and then also I use like a favorite citrusy seasoning mm -hmm. that has a little bit of pepper in it. And do I have it here? I'm sure I have it here. A little bit of pepper in it and lemon peel, orange mm -hmm. peel, so mm -hmm. it's got a nice citrus sure. flavor. And then something that I learned. So then you would you would puree it, uh -huh. and then you put your oops, you open your top, mm -hmm. and as it is working, right, you pour a little bit of oil in there at a time. Yeah, you could use olive oil. Yeah, and Normally, like I would just combine all the ingredients sure. and do it all at once. Right. But then somebody told me about the emulsifying mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. So you puree mm -hmm. everything together first. Right. And then you add a tiny bit of oil at a time. And just to show you, um, with the dressing, as creamy as that is, I like to... I like to store it in small containers like this because right. it lasts longer. Sure. I find if I keep it in a bigger container and scoop out a little at a time, it ends up getting a little avocado brown on top. Right. So right. it lasts long this way. That's how long, how long ago were you at my house? Was it like two oh, weeks? I think two weeks okay. ago, yeah. This has yeah. been in my refrigerator since then and has not separated. Wow. So by doing that process of adding the oil right. toward the end, a tiny bit at a time, what a great it really helps to keep it stable. So yeah. I want to share that with you. What a, what a great tip. And I, wa I want you to share a little bit about being a healthy and lifestyle coach. You do something very unique that I, I thought was very important because with my patients, I'm always saying to pre-plan ahead, to be aware of what you're eating, to think ahead of what your meals are going to be so it can be healthy and delicious and something easily accessible to put together as Ellen has shown us here. But Ellen works with women to teach them to... Mm -hmm. To take, a, to take control of mealtime in right. their own home. I and find that, that so many people, they, they stress about mealtime. There was somebody that I met, she was telling me that she would start worrying about mealtime. Like right after lunch, she would start uh -huh. freaking out about what she was going to do for right. dinner. Right. How she was going to get food shopping done, what she was going to serve for dinner. How to get right. out of work on time to get home to feed dinner to her family and get the kids to bed. Right. And realize right. how much money employers are losing. Right. 
Right. Because their employees are stressing about dinner all day. Interesting. So interesting. So I just like I just like empowering people to be in control of what they're doing. Uh huh. So what I try doing is get women together mm -hmm. and we would assemble a few meals mm -hmm. at a time. Mm -hmm. We would just assemble them and put them either in bags or containers to go in the freezer. Right. So all they have to do is defrost and cook. So what this turns Fantastic. out to be is that I'm right. finding out that husbands are cooking more. Um, the kids are cooking more. Which is so important to and, me. And when you're not stressing about mealtime, that's huge for you. So it it's is. kind of a stress reliever. It so is. So just knowing what you're eating. That's such a valuable service so. you provide. And you also go into their pantry and you make sure they have yeah. certain spices and wonderful things to yeah. to work with their foods. What's funny is I had met with one of my friends and she was she was seeing a nutritionist or a doctor and the doctor mm -hmm. was telling her what to eat. Mm -hmm. And she figured that quinoa and brown rice were healthy. Mm -hmm. But what she didn't realize was that when you get the box mixes that have all the additives, preservatives, and tons of sodium sure. in I there, agree. it's I not agree. exactly the healthiest way. Right. So... I help people make healthy substitutions right. so they can think about what they're doing for on their next grocery list. I would never go into someone's house and say, clean it out, throw it away, right. but right. just to help them make changes for next time. Right, which is so That's valuable like today because we all, I, I, we all have such hectic and chaotic schedules to be able to have that taken out of the picture to mm -hmm. know what to eat, what ingredients yeah. to we buy. We have enough things foods. to stress about. We don't need to stress about food, <laughs> right? Absolutely. And this is a wonderful way, like I said, for the kids to get involved, to be in the whole process, as Ellen said, with the garden, with picking the things and washing them, selecting them and cutting them, and just making mealtime fun for the whole family. This so, is pretty colorful. Isn't that nice? I bet it is. Looks Very good. colorful. All that I Looks cool. love to share. Okay. So you had breakfast. You mm -hmm. had a good lunch. Yes. Great snacks? Yes. Okay. Ready yes. for dinner? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. God, this day went quick. <laughs> <laughs> and the, sm the, sm the smells are like permeating <laughs> through the room. My crew is ready to eat. Um, let me put this over here. Okay, do you need me to get you copies of any of the recipes so you can have them for you? Oh, that'd be, that would be fantastic. Stuff. I'm always trying to look for wonderful and great ideas for my patients, okay. my clients, as far as great, easily accessible and quick things to put together, okay. which you do, and you're so gifted at it. I try. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I learned about uh, this. About which, what? About <laughs> how you're going to make your zucchini noodles. Okay. So... You hear of zoodles, zoodles, right? And yes. you're like, what the heck? And there are these big contraptions out there to to make all the sure. zucchini noodles and sure. stuff. Sure. So I found this this silly little thing in the supermarket. Yeah. And yeah, I, I found it. I found it at a time when I needed to be exercising my hand more, and oh I was like, goodness, well, this is a good way to grip. Fantastic. Well, you know, you need to recover from <laughs> surgery, so it's like that's therapy. All right. So it's this very simple little thing. All right. I'm silly. No, that's great. And all you do, you twist your zucchini and you're making noodles. Isn't that cool? And that, and, get and that exceptional, that. especially for uh, people that are trying to lower their carbohydrate intake but also want something nutrient dense. Um, uh, to have something high right. in fiber but also absolutely <laughs> delicious. That's like one string. <laughs> <laughs> that is fabulous. Okay, so we're gonna do we're gonna do um, shrimp over zoodles. So you end up zoodling up a few zucchini. You want to hang on to it? Okay. Yeah. You can see. Looks wonderful, doesn't it? So fresh, clean, delicious, full of fiber, without those refined carbs. I know, cool, right? You can put that aside. I'm yeah. done with that for now. <laughs> so you can cook that up. Just saute it up with a little bit of of avocado oil or olive oil right. and you don't even need to season that because right. everything else you're doing yeah. is going to add enough flavor. Yeah. So are you going to cut up your red pepper? I did that already. Is that okay? I'm so impressed. I took a shortcut. I am so impressed. <laughs> and shallots? And and one great shallots which are wonderful foods. I guess what kinds oh. of mushrooms these are? Shiitake? No. Portobello. portobello. <laughs> you know portobello. I love portobello yes. mushrooms, right? Yes. Okay. Mmm. Smells... So inviting. All right. So a tiny bit of oil uh -huh. in here. Right. And I just like to add like a little bit of my steak seasoning right. to that. Right. That works well. And then do you love cream sauces? I do. 
Yeah, I do. I try to do it moderation and portion control, that. but I do. We don't love all that uh, <laughs> dairy, right? right? Okay. So what I do is I take uh, coconut milk, uh -huh. and I use the full fat one. Right. And I open the can up right. while I refrigerate it. So right. if I know I'm going to cook this up, I the day before, I'll put this in the refrigerator. Sure. And then I open the can, and I take out the entire fat section of right. it and put it in a bowl. Wonderful. And I whisk that with a little bit of... There's a seasoning that I love. It has a mild dill flavor right. to it, so I add some of that. Cause Great I'm trick. sorry, shrimp and dill. Sure. Right? You yeah. need to. You got it. And then I reserve half a cup of the coconut milk from right. here. Right. And I just whisk all that together, and I use that as a cream sauce. What You are for this. such an exceptional cook. That is such a great idea. There's one more little trick, too. <laughs> and if you want to thicken that sauce up a little bit, right. you could mm -hmm. use um, a little bit of arrowroot mm -hmm. or cornstarch. Uh -huh. um, Just a little bit. Mix sure. like a, a teaspoon and a teaspoon right. of water right. and then add it to the pan. Wow. And it makes that cream sauce a little thicker. A little, a little bit. I can't wait to try this. You got the finished dinner over there. I know. <laughs> I can't wait to, to try this at home. It, it looks absolutely. Isn't that great? Absolutely. And what's, what's fabulous about this is it's something you're taking into account lower carbohydrate, refined, not refined carbohydrates, also dairy free. You're taking into account something that is used with coconut milk, which is great saturated fat, healthy fats, which I encourage, and as well shrimp, which is a great source of uh, wonderful protein. Wow. And one thing, when I gave up dairy 10 years ago, mm -hmm. like one thing I always miss, my yeah. cream sauces. Yeah. Loving this. One of my friends, she messaged me yesterday and she says, oh my God, I made this. My family loves it. And they all went back for seconds. And I was like, well, if you're going to be watching the calories for the day, they all don't want to be going back for seconds, <laughs> but they loved it that much. So it was really good. Do you have a favorite thing that you like to cook? Oh my God. Yeah. If I tell you it's a dessert. <laughs> Well, I, I do, love. I do believe you can have there, desserts. There but are, in yeah, there, there, there are definitely some fattening desserts that I love making. Right. But I don't eat them at home. I just yeah. know that I have things that I can whip up that I can bring somewhere else. Right. Right. But I just, I just love all these recipes. You know, um, you know the company so that I work with. They just right. keep coming up with new recipes. There's over five thousand of them that I know of. And there's there's something for everyone. And it's so yeah, fabulous, it's absolutely fabulous in terms of the combination of all these colors and flavors and textures. And what's so interesting is that they're so easy to put together. It's actually very easy to put everything together quick and simple um, without the fuss. And this lovely woman who's worked so hard to put this wonderful presentation together, exceptional cook as well as... It wasn't hard. Healthy <laughs> lifestyle coach. I can't thank you so fun. much for being here, Ellen. No, this is so much thank fun. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you to all of you for tuning in and uh, to my wonderful crew. Thank you so much and have a great night.